Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Brent Berkeley. I work for Taser. I'm a former prosecutor and uh, worked for the National District Attorneys Association for uh, quite a while before I came to Taser. What they asked me to do today is essentially tell you what's on the market relating uh, to body cameras. Uh, there's a lot of discussion that has been going on. Uh, body cameras are not new. Uh, Taser, just as, a, as one company through our Axon brand, has been making body cameras or some sort of uh, police camera for about the last five years. But certainly, uh, the discussion has uh, really blown up over the last 18 months since Ferguson and with Baltimore and the other incidents around the country. The issue of body cameras and the perspective of what these devices can do uh, to record police citizen interactions has become probably one of the largest uh, police uh, law enforcement and prosecution discussions that we've had uh, in the last 10 years or so. Uh, so what are they? What can they do? Essentially a body camera is, is what it sounds like. It's a camera that a police officer wears somewhere on their uniform that can record an interaction uh, between citizens and law enforcement. And one of the things that we talk about a lot uh, from our perspective as a vendor and that law enforcement and prosecutors talk as well is the idea of the type of videos that you'll see. Because uh, I could ask right now, how many of you in this room do not have a device in your pocket that could record this uh, incident right now? Who does not? I'm going to ask the question. Who doesn't? <laughs> one. One. All right. She's got a Nokia somewhere. It's uh, weighing down her, her bag, and, and, and it, it, she's got back problems from carrying that thing around. Um, that's, that's about uh, the, the reality of it uh, right now, and, and you'll see incidents right now. There's, you'll see them on uh, television. We saw one yesterday about an incident uh, in South Carolina with, uh, uh, with a student being arrested and pulled out of uh, her desk in a classroom. So what do we see in those videos? We see what happens after an incident goes bad. After something occurs and an arrest is being made, force, justifiable or not, is being applied, and that's what we see. What we do not see is what happened before. We have no idea what happened before in the incident with that officer and with that individual in the classroom. Was the officer justified? I don't know. We'll find out, you know, as, as the case uh, moves forward. Uh, was the officer not justified? Again, I don't know. We'll move, we'll learn more about that as the case moves forward. But what body cameras allow the public, law enforcement, prosecution, and the courts to do is to get an idea of what happens uh, in an entire police interaction. So the question, you know, that they asked me to talk about is what can and can they not do? They can record what goes on, you know, from an officer's perspective. That's what they give you. They give you the perspective of an officer from the officer out. Um, and depending on the type of camera that they use, there are a number of different cameras that are available on the market. Uh, we are not the only vendor for body cameras. There are a half a dozen big ones that were the leading manufacturer. Uh, within the, the law enforcement community. Uh, we have two varieties, one that an officer will mount on their chest, which is uh, the cheapest one, um, that gives you uh, like a 135 degree view of what's going on in front of the officer. Uh, benefits to that are it's, it's right there, it's, easy, it, it's uh, difficult to uh, knock off, it's easy to record. The downside of them, as you may have seen in some, is that if a weapon, whether it be a, a taser less lethal weapon or a firearm is deployed, in this, in this manner, that's going to block the view of that camera, and all you're going to see is the back of the officer's hand and the back of the officer's weapon. Uh, that's a downside. We have another version. Uh, I think we're probably the only ones that, that make them is what we call our flex camera, which is mounted on an epaulette. It can be mounted on a hat or it can be mounted on a pair of glasses that sees uh, you know, the officer's point of view uh, from their head. That has a 75 degree field of view, so it gives you uh, a more condensed field of view, but it gives you a much better view point of uh, what the officer is seeing at any time. It's not, not blocked by a weapon, uh, non-lethal or otherwise. The biggest problem that, uh, well, there's two major problems with those. I mean, cameras are cameras. You can go to Best Buy, you can buy a GoPro and strap it on an officer and there you've got a body camera. The big question is what do you do with the data after the recording uh, is, is stopped? Uh, you know, a couple issues that we'll talk about, I'm sure, today uh, is what about the confidential and private information? What does an officer do and how do they manage that data when they uh, respond to a domestic violence dispute at a private home? They go inside and they see private uh, things inside the home. How do they redact that information? Even something as simple as investigating a traffic crash and you know, what happens? If anybody's ever been involved in that, you know what happens. Officer says, okay, you witnessed this crash that occurred. You were standing out here on 6th and C and you saw two cars collide. What's your name? What's your address? What's your phone number? 
date of birth, all that kind of stuff, so they can contact you in case you're needed for court. How do the, the law enforcement agencies manage that data so that that is not subject to a FOIA request or that doesn't get out to uh, an individual who, um, who, doesn't, uh, who doesn't need that? There's also the question of what happens if you have, uh, for example, a domestic violence, sexual assault victim who doesn't want to speak if they're on camera? Or what if they're worried that because they're a victim of a stalking case and that their stalker is going to get a hold of that video as either part of discovery or part of a FOIA request and their stalker finds out where they are? Uh, those are huge issues that, that uh, have to be addressed. Uh, by policy from the law enforcement per agency perspective as well as from the prosecution agency perspective prior to deployment of body cameras. So there has to be the ability to redact. There has to be the avail ability to easily review and policies about when those things get released and when they get uh, re re uh, retained and not released. Uh, the other big thing, and this is kind of, you know, really more of a government concern, is how do you pay for all this? This is an expensive process, and not just the cameras himself, but as well as the data. My time is up, uh, but those are just some of the issues that we've got. Uh, there's two of us here from Taser, happy to answer your questions. We've even got some cameras you can look at if you want to, so thanks.